Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the very first episode of Spearhead Sundays for 2021. I'm fresh off break. I've had a lovely little holiday. If you guys, if you had time, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't have time, sucked in, ha ha, but I hope you find the time whenever you can, all right? I had a a great uh, little break, and by little I mean many weeks after an entire year of fucking trying to make shit work. I know everyone had that year. I'm not going to spend fucking the first 20 minutes complaining about it, unless I do, of course. Uh, But uh, I had, uh, you know, I, I feel like 2020 was the year of getting it done anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like getting it done anyway, despite all of the shit, even if we couldn't do it as well as we wanted to, even if shows got cancelled, we fucking made it through. You guys are a big part of that, big reason, especially all those Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. If you're a long-term person or if you just jumped on board, thank you, fuck you, I appreciate it. Uh, And... uh, Look, man, we did it. We made it through. I hope you made the best of it as well. I do think that 2021 is going to be an incredible year, an amazing year. It's going to be so much better than last year, unless you're American. Sucked in! Ha ha ha! Land of the free! Can't even have a fucking Twitter account for your president! <laughs> man, I, uh, look, I do feel for Americans. Oh, you guys will be all right. You guys, you guys, you know, it's fine, you know? Trump fucked some shit up, but that's okay. You've got Joe Biden to look forward to. Good luck. Cunt can't remember his own fucking name without falling asleep. Good luck. No, I don't know, man. That that Capitol Hill raid shit is is crazy. Um, I don't know what to think about. I've got so many like mixed opinions on it. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know if uh, if I'm pro or anti storming the capital no i'm not i'm not i'm not pro storming the capital that was some fucking dumb shit i by but i will here's one thing that i have a very very strong belief and i think that's something that we can all agree on this is something that i know to be true uh and that is the capitol hill raid is funny and i'm going to tell you why after this i need to fucking change my life here Jeez, you think that i'd be doing this a little bit that's better. Oh, I look a little bit more, a little bit more bright. Uh, I also wanted to say, uh, I've, I'm, I've uh, obviously I had a big streak. I've brought out the whiteboard again for any of you audio peasants. Uh, but I've, I've, I had a big, you know, fucking win streak with doing the podcast consistently during quarantine. And then as soon as Luke and Lewis and the Lugies live show came, that got all fucked up. So. I'm bringing back the whiteboard, okay? So what we have here is I'm resetting the counter. This is, uh, it's going to say 2021 and then weeks since missed episode. And I'm very happy to put this at a one. This is our first week, okay? If you guys have your whiteboards, if you guys have your little notes app in your phone, week since last missed episode one. Now, last year, obviously, this whiteboard helped me immensely. I think I went, I can't remember how, I went for months without missing a single episode, but ultimately it did crumble. Now, what am I going to do this year? Because this year, I've got no excuses. There's no quarantine. There's, you know, there's no remote working. Keelan can come in and make it all happen. There's hopefully the COVID restrictions are going to go away and and we'll come out the other end once we all get microchipped. So it's not going to happen again, but I also need to keep myself accountable. So I came up with this idea and I think this would be great for all of us to do. Uh, I think it's super easy to participate in. I think that if you're listening to this and you are a weekly listener and you want to hit every episode this year, I highly, highly encourage you to do this with me. It's a pact, okay? I uh, have I've been thinking a long time because you know there's things that I can do like oh you know with Luke and Lewis it's like oh if I hit a thousand subs on Twitch I'll dye my hair blue. I regret that a lot, okay? So I don't want it to be just a me thing. I think it's a, it'll work a lot better if we're all in it together. Like we did the fitness challenge over on Luke and Lewis, okay? So and that people really like being included. So that's what this idea is. It's inclusion. It's something that you can do uh, at home and really follow along and I think it will keep us all accountable and also if you jump on board with this, it gives me even more motivation. 
uh, to not miss an episode. So here's my idea that all of us should uh, participate in. I'm going to do an episode every single week for an entire year, starting now, from now until the end of 2021. I will not miss a single Sunday upload. Now, let's get this straight. This isn't Sunday morning. You know, it's not fucking whatever. It is Sunday. And I will give myself a little caveat. If the video version's late, that's fine. It's the audio thing. I, when I'm on tour, sometimes the video is late. Doesn't count. Audio will always come up Sunday, okay? In my time zone, not yours. Fuck you wherever you live, okay? And if I miss an episode, and if you miss an episode, I think this is great. We all jump on board with this. If we all do this, there's no way I'm going to miss an episode because I've decided that if I miss a single episode in 2021 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, I have decided to kill myself. And I highly encourage you to jump on board with this. It's a suicide pact. If I miss an episode, we all go out together. We meet up on the West Gate. We, are, we go one, two, three, and we all jump. You might have to book an interstate trip, but who cares? You're not going to use that money in the afterlife, are you? What are you, King Tut? <laughs> so that's what, I, that's what I really think is a great idea. That's what, that'll keep me accountable. Hopefully that will keep you listening because, you know, uh, if, if I miss an episode, we're all gone. You know, all 10,000 of us, that's it. That's, it's over. It's, it's got done for good, you know? Think of the grieving mothers. If we all do it, that'll affect the economy. Not in a huge way, but it'll be noteworthy. Think of the headlines. Podcaster misses episode so 10,000 of his listeners kill themselves. <laughs> Think of that. The publicity it would get me. Not that I'd be able to capitalize on it, but, you know, maybe Luke could pay rent for a couple of weeks off that. My girlfriend could sell some memorial T-shirts. No one would buy them because you guys would all be dead. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> I'm leaving something, leaving a legacy. So so that's my pack. That's my promise to you. If I miss a single episode, I will kill myself. No, I won't. I'll, prob I'll probably, and, and that is a joke. I don't really want to do a suicide pack. Not yet. I'm not ready for that yet. Maybe maybe once I uh, get a million subscribers, we can organize like some, kind of, some sort of suicide pack. Until then, uh, I will just be doing the whiteboard thing. And if I miss an episode, look, I'll think of a punishment, I promise you. Uh, it won't be jumping off the Westgate, but it might be driving there, you know, and just having a look. It's not a very good view. Um, so this is a brand new year. I am committed to that. I do want to do this podcast properly. Uh, I don't think shit should get in the way. I wanted to talk about what's happening next this year. Yeah, man, uh, I'm I'm very excited about it. We, despite all of this, last year put me in this position where my whole fucking career, all my business was like, it. I will make videos and I'll break even money wise on the videos, and that's fine because I'll make my money on tour. And that was kind of how I ran my business. It's like musicians, you know. I kind of copied my business model from rappers, literally, like independent rappers. That's where I got a lot of my business sense from, from just doing what they did and applying it to comedy, so which was, you know, take a loss on the music, make your money on touring and merch. Uh, whereas last year, obviously, touring was gone, so it put forced me into a position where I'm like, well, fuck, I need to figure out how to make the videos only profitable and, and, and do that properly and just do YouTube. And it worked really well. So that was kind of the only literally upside of, you know, all this COVID and all that kind of shit. And last year, that was the only upside of it for me was I figured out how to fix my thing. I figured out how to do YouTube properly. I obviously did the, pod, did the podcast properly uh, for the most part. So I, I think that I, I want to keep that going. And then if touring comes back in, this leaves me with budget to hire another person. So if we're adding another person to the team, uh, we're bringing on Jackson, who has uh, done all of my second channel videos, if you've seen them. And uh, he's also uh, done a few main channel videos that you may have seen recently. He edited the English food video uh, and a couple of others. You'll see it in the description. But we're bringing him on board and uh, we are going to just make it impossible for me to miss an upload. Uh, because Keelan's with me three days a week. He's split between this and Luke and Lewis. But uh, between Keelan and Jackson, we've got five days a week all hands on deck with Lewis and as obviously as well as myself putting out content because basically I just want to get to a point where the only thing I do is make real comedy for you guys really focus on the writing and the performance and the stand up and that's it I don't want to I don't want to worry about posting and scheduling and editing and subtitling and all that kind of stuff that really slows me down on the creation front like I want to just be putting out the, the like a, a really 
high amount of super high quality comedy. And at the moment, my brain can do that, but I just don't have enough hours if I'm also editing and posting. So we're trying to solve that problem. We would love to be able to bring Jackson on like, you know, three or four or five days a week, whatever we can do, just to make the output of the content fucking ridiculous and really high quality. So I'm super excited about this year. That's what we're doing. I can afford Jackson for about a few months. And then I'm happy to say that I have booked in the comedy festival. Melbourne's locked in. I'm stoked for it. It's going to be fucking great. And uh, I think I just pray to God that it doesn't get cancelled. Hopefully it won't, and I'll see you there. I'm not booking any inter interstate shows. Luke Kidgel was looking at booking Brisbane, and then they just shut the borders. So I was like, fuck that. I'm not even going to worry about it until we're all microchipped and walking around like Bill Gates automatons, you know, walking around for Amazon like drones. That's what I'm waiting for, and then I will do a show, and then I will be executed for making a joke about, you know, the Chinese president or great leader or whatever the fuck the cunt's called. <clears throat> Where's Jack Ma, bro? Um, you guys seen that shit? Jack Ma? Basically, China's Jeff Bezos, like super rich guy. He does. He's, he owns like Alibaba. He's the reason there's all these drop shipping Shopify scams out there. He said one negative thing. I will get back to what I want to do. I don't want to talk for a fucking hour about oh, what I'm doing. Um, what else do we have here? I, wa I wanted to see what did Jack Ma actually say? Because... He's like just disappeared like last week. Let's have a look. <laughs> Jack Ma, where are we? I can't find what he said. What did he say? He criticized the Chinese government and then he just disappeared. Jack Ma criticized government. Yeah, here we go. Here's a statement. Here's a statement. I'm finding it. I'm getting there. He hasn't been seen in public for two months. He criticized China's financial system by calling for changes and reforms. Oh, he's worth $58 billion. That is crazy. F worth $58 billion comes from a communist country. I guess that shit works, doesn't it? Works for the right people, doesn't it? Until you say the wrong thing. That is insane. He retired from Alibaba in September 2019. There was speculation at the time that Ma's retirement was due to tension with the Chinese Communist Party. It was believed that the leaders of the party were leery of his outsized power and influence. Yeah, I mean, that's fucking a little bit crazy. Ma ominously and presciently told a group of rural researchers in 2016, I think among the richest men in China, few have good endings. Yeah, you would... I mean, why the fuck would you live there? Like, if you made that much money, just get the fuck out. You've got enough money to live anywhere, anywhere you want. You've got enough money to live for literally generations of richness. Get the fuck out. Like, it's, if I made... If I made, like, one million in China, I'm getting the fuck out. This guy had 58 billion... And he was, he was just, oh, I'm going to stay. Like, what do you, like, leave, bro? You don't need the money. You're just not doing anything interesting. You're running fucking Amazon for China. Who cares, bro? Get out. I, like, I would not stay. If I made, bro, if I made 58 billion, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. <laughs> no, I probably would. I would love the, I love the idea of, like, bro, I would love for Bitcoin to be just worth billions of coin. So that then I could then I could have like you know a small percentage of a billion, and then I could just come on here as one of the richest men on earth, and just talk shit and just get my just I love what Elon Musk does you know, like he's undeniably one of the best businessmen in the world. He runs incredibly successful companies. He's changing the world, and then he just gets on Twitter and says dumb shit. He just memes. He'll do a video with PewDiePie. That's the future of business, is being a businessman, but also kind of doing a few dances on TikTok, you know? Bill Gates is out there trying to fucking, you know, vaccinate people and, and save the world and 
Cure hunger. Cool, bro. Make a video. No one cares. Get on Twitch, you fucking loser. Oh, I'm going to be a philanthropist. I'm going to save the world. I'm going to change the planet for the good. Shut up, bro. Do the renegade. No one wants to, no one wants to see a billionaire change the world. We want to see them do the woe. Okay? No, like, if that's, that's the thing. If you're a fucking billionaire... Be an influencer also, or shut the fuck up, you know? Like, I don't want to see... I don't care. That's that's why I like Jeff Bezos. I don't want to hear his opinion on anything. He has the money, and he says, fuck all. You never see him say anything. People are like, oh, if Jeff Bezos donated all of his money, he could cure poverty, and he doesn't. And I can respect that. I respect that a lot more than all these billionaires going, no, I'm going to say the... Shut up, bro. Do the woe. Get a fucking 360 no scope off a building while streaming on Twitch or go away. Donate anonymously. I don't care. Why do you need to why do you need to be the face of your fucking charity also? Do you reckon cuz does that work? Celebrity endorsements, I love it. I get it. I understand it. I I really understood it when I did some charity and then I raised double the money because people saw me do it and you guys were like, oh, I'm going to, Lewis is doing it, I'm going to chip in. That's, love that, that's great. But I'm sick of billionaires being the head of charity. Does it work? Because, look, if I see, like, you know, a YouTuber raising money, I'll chip in some money because I know that they can't fix the problem themselves. But when I see Bill Gates standing at the fucking head of a charity board, I look at that and I go, why would I give them my money? They've got Bill Gates on the board, all right? That is now his problem exclusively. I'm not helping at all. Fuck fuck those kids with malaria. They're, they're sorted. There's obviously other problems that need help, you know? Because, like, really, that's like fucking Jeff Bezos walking up to you next to a homeless guy and being like, can you give me 10 bucks? This homeless guy's starving. I'd be like, bro, I've only got 30 bucks. You do it. Take him to Macca's, you bald cunt. I'm sick of billionaires heading charities. Just give it, give it to the charity. Let them run it. You be a fucking billionaire. Go hang out with Epstein, bro. You fucking do it. Why do I have to help you? You've got the money. What, you're just trying to prove to me that you're not a bad person? You're a billionaire. You're kind of a bad guy, you know? You're not actively trying to harm the planet, but if you have a billion, you're kind of not that good of a person. You know what I mean? I just don't think that you can have a billion dollars and also be a great guy, you know? I've never heard anyone say, oh, fucking Jeff's, Jeff's a good tells a good yarn. No, he doesn't. He's a billionaire. He's probably done some evil shit. And, and that's, I'm not saying that all billionaires should be executed. I'm not some blue hair front fringe. I'm some blue hair Australian dickhead. I'm really disappointed that I was, I was going to, I'm, I'm, I had to say no, I'm not some blue hair front fringe because the first thing I was going to say was I'm not, I'm not some fucking idiot with blue hair. Oh, I am. Actually, I am a fucking idiot with blue hair. Maybe the blue dye has seeped into my brain. That's why I'm ranting about billionaires and TikTok, you know? That's that's the only thing that my brain can comprehend is wanting to kill billionaires and also TikTok dancers because I have blue hair. I'm sorry, I can't help it. And you know what? Maybe that's why I want to kill myself too. <laughs> See a lot of cunts with blue hair talking about that on Twitter. Okay, bit much. Um... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So with the output that we want to hit, man, I've, uh, I'm have i bringing back Bi-Monthly Bull. And uh, really, the, the I would say that the reason... Bi-Monthly Bull was obviously just impossible last year. We didn't even try to do it because uploading and downloading that much footage and doing all of the editing, by the time we could actually get it done, everything we talked about was just irrelevant because it is, you know, it is a fucking topical news satire show. So you do need to stay on top of things. You can't be doing shit like a week late. Um, but uh, that's another big reason why I'm bringing on another person because really bi-monthly bull takes two full days to edit because you've got to edit the video and then you're going to do all the graphics and make all the transitions and then do all of that kind of stuff. So what we're really trying to do is turn that two days into one because you have two people. So split it in half and then put it together at the end. And then that way I can really just focus on writing and performing uh, the series. So uh, I am really making it my goal this year to just do bi-monthly bull properly. And hopefully if I can do shows, have stand up clips, also, once a month, every two weeks, whatever we can afford depends on how often we're performing, or I'm performing, rather. Um, 
So that's kind of what, what we can look forward to. That's what I'm planning for. And that's obviously all funded uh, on Patreon, uh, which I'm very grateful for to all the people who stuck by me this year because I was really like, oh, fuck, I owe a lot of money from shows that never happened and flights that were venues that were paid for. Uh, and uh, I assumed that a lot of people were going to jump off Patreon because they would be struggling through similar shit, which a lot of people did. And I totally understand, but a lot of people stuck by and they were like, man, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to figure it out. And I, that, that, that type of shit is like really special. So thank you very much to everyone who stuck on there, everyone who jumped on board and all the people that are going to, or thinking about it. I do appreciate it because that's how we're really going to get this comedy out there. You know, like that's another thing that kind of dropped off ad rates dropped off massively because businesses were doing it tough and they couldn't afford to advertise. It's kind of coming back to normal, but that, you know, does affect it. There's a lasting effect there. Merch sales were down. Everything was down, but Patreon wasn't. Um, so I, do appreciate it, and, and that's uh, fucking special. So all the people in the Discord and, and uh, supporting, that's amazing, and I appreciate it, and that's what we're really trying to do. I think my goal with this year is to really just do what we wanted to do last year, which is just put out the, the best quality content that we ever have. I'm in the new house. I'm in the new studio, um, and there's hopefully going to be no restrictions, no more COVID here for the rest of the year, uh, and we're just going to do what I planned to do when I moved in this place at the start of last year, which is just put out the best content of my life, take over the YouTube game and be, uh, you know, that fucking real comedy guy that you know and love. Um, so that's what we're doing. That's what we're moving forward. And I'm, I'm happy to have you guys on board. Another thing that we're doing is, uh, I, I've, I've, with the extra help that we're having with editing, we have space now to be doing content for other social media platforms. So I've been looking at I've been looking around and I've been looking at what I want to do and what's possible. And, and Instagram is like a really Instagram and TikTok is something that I really want to do well, but I don't want to be like every other fucking guy on TikTok where I'm just making like reaction videos or lip syncing or dancing or shaking my preteen ass. What I really want to do <clears throat> is, uh, is, is shake my balls. Uh, I really want to, I, I've, I figured out this, this series called real talk because it's for Instagram reels. Cause I think there's a lot more potential on Instagram reels than there is TikTok at the moment. Cause uh, no one's really prioritizing reels. So a lot of people are going TikTok first and then they're also putting stuff on reels. I'm doing the reverse. I think that reels is going to fucking explode. So what I've worked out is a series called real talk and uh, I'm going to be posting five days a week on my Instagram reels and also on TikTok and Twitter and Facebook, but it's mainly for reels, 30 seconds of just straight jokes, straight fire, unfiltered stuff. Cause there's obviously there, there is no monetization. There is no ads and the, and the, uh, the moderation seems to be a little bit looser because of that straight fire five days a week about whatever happened today or whatever timeless thing that's funny, whatever relatable uh, topic that I can think of or whatever happened today. So we did a little trial. We did two by the time you're listening to this, um, unless you're a Patreon supporter, if you listen to this on Sunday, uh, by the time this is out, there, I would have dropped three. So we did one on, uh, well, we did one on uh, Trump getting banned, which happened uh, that day, I believe. We did one on Coon Cheese getting its name changed, uh, which I'll talk about in a, in a minute. That happened that day. And then we did one on the Trump protests, which was a few days late, but we're working out the series and how best to do it. Um, and uh, so far they've been going great. <clears throat> you know, it's like, uh, it's just a way to kind of get jokes to the people as quickly as possible and as, fish, as efficiently as possible, the easiest, most shareable way as well. Because I feel like a big problem with my content has always been, other than like the vaccine one or the Marxism one or the stunts or the stand-up, my content hasn't been the most shareable because it's long-form YouTube content. I've never been able to do that like relatable viral stuff. Luke Kidgel's great at it where it's just like real short, real relatable because I'm just not a relatable cunt. But what I have been really good at is just being like straight funny with words, like jokes, joke writing, doing that like fuck shit, being uh, concise with words so that I can get just as many jokes out as possible in a like edgy, different way that's different to uh, a lot of these other like uh, fucking government funded ABC Australian comics that are just like boring. I can do that really well. Uh, and I think there's a huge demand for that, but I've never been shareable. So doing 
Real Talk, which is just 30 seconds of whatever happened today, super shareable on Instagram. You just DM it to a mate. You put it on your story. You tag someone in the comments. That's what it's for. So uh, if you guys enjoy something, send it to someone. If you enjoy it, put it on your story. Leave a comment. We're really going for engagement here because I reckon I can really hack this system. This is what I'm going for. Instagram Reels wants to beat TikTok. I reckon I can hack this. So if I'm putting out daily Reels, one of them's going to go viral. At some point, one, probably many of them will just go viral. I've already had crazy viral reels hitting like half a million. Some one, one of the, A few of the stand-up clips are on like 700,000, I believe. Or there's, there's a few over half a mil. I think that if I can post every single day or five days a week two reels with like trendy, punchy, funny stuff that's shareable, I think that we can hack this. And I reckon I could grow my Instagram from what it is now, 60,000 to like 100, fuck it, 200,000 is possible in a year. Um, Because that's kind of where I'm getting my growth from is all these little reels that I've done. When they hit half a million, I go up like 3,000 subscribers. I think if we work together and we we hack this Instagram system, where if I'm putting out reels that are getting a lot of likes, a lot of comments, a lot of shares in the DM or shares to the story. Instagram is going to see that and be like, oh, regular Reels creator from Australia. Let's put him in front of everyone because they got to, you know, they got to compete with TikTok. If I'm prioritizing Reels and everyone else is doing it the other way around, Instagram is going to see that. Instagram is going to see you guys enjoying it and Instagram is going to put it everywhere. And then that's going to take me to the next level. All these Reels getting fucking hundreds of thousands of views. That's going to push everyone to buy a monthly bull, everyone to the podcast, everyone to see, see me live. And I reckon that's going to kind of be the strategy this year. And I'm bringing you guys in on this because you guys are the ones that support me. And if you listen to this, you're like a hardcore fan and I appreciate you. Uh, unless you're just really casual in that case, I'll get you next time. Don't worry. Uh, you guys are part of the team, and that's why I like every year at the start of the year, I kind of be, I kind of, I mean, you can go and listen to the start of last year and you can listen to my plans and laugh at them. Poor, ignorant uh, Lewis had no idea what was coming. This year, I feel like this COVID stuff is done in Australia at least. Sorry if you're American. This is how we're going to do it. Funnel people in, get all the casual fans, get all the people who have never heard of me in with this real talk. They'll see one of them. They'll like it. And they'll go, oh, who's this guy? They'll check out my Reels page and they'll see that I've done one every single fucking day for whenever they check it, one month or six months or a year, whenever they see it, they'll say, oh, this guy's got a huge backlog. I'll watch a few. They'll blast through. They're only 30 seconds. You, you, sit, you sit there fucking hours on TikTok. I do it, wasting your life. If you, if you find someone who likes this shit, they'll go through, watch three or four. They go, oh, fuck, this guy's great. I'll follow him on Instagram. They'll see the next Reel. They'll go, I'll oh, check out his YouTube channel. They'll see Buy Monthly Bull which is essentially real talk, but 10 minutes even funnier because I can go more in depth and present more points of view and make fun of more people and be a little bit more edgy. Then they go, fuck, I'll see him live. I'll listen to the podcast. They're fully in. So Reels is a bit of a funnel. That's kind of what I'm missing in this whole thing. I've got my regular content. I've got bi-monthly bull. I need that short shareable shit. That's my funnel. And that's how we're going to take over this year. And I really do think... If I can keep this up five days a week for a year, which I can because I've got two people helping me out now, thanks to you guys, we're going to take over 2021, man. That's how we're going to do it. So that's my method. I'm going to hack Instagram. And also, you put them on TikTok. They, they've been going like just as well almost on TikTok as well, looking at it. Yeah, so the first one that I put out, I've, I've only put out two as of recording. First one I put out got 15,000 on TikTok and then on Instagram it has 32. So even if, if even if that's the lowest, right? Say that's the worst that they do. They don't improve. Say they don't improve. That's 50,000 cunts every single day seeing my shit. And that's the funnel. That's a huge amount of people and that is hopefully the worst they will perform over a long period of time because they should just go up. What I find with reels is that they'll get half of what they're going to get in the first day, and then over the next week they double. So if it gets a 50 in the first day, it'll end up as 100. If it gets 100, it'll end up as 200, so on and so forth. That's what I'm kind of finding. And I really do feel if I have a backlog of these, people are going to binge them, and then they're in. And then we've got them, and then we welcome them in. They listen to this. 
and they're corrupted forever. Next thing we know, massive suicide pact. And that's the end of the plan. You get a million people in the suicide pact, we change the world. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of my plans for this for this year. Uh, and then hopefully we can do shows. I'm, I'm not counting on shows, but I will say I have tentative, I have booked in uh, a venue for the Melbourne Comedy Festival. It's right in the middle of the city. It's in Chinatown. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be small, super intimate. Uh, there's not many tickets on sale because of COVID restrictions are still there. Um, and I think uh, I think it's going to go ahead. So I'm really excited for it. And if you want to, you know, get access to that, it's loosebeers.com slash gig list to get on the mailing list. There's a high chance because of the limited capacity, the shit sells out in pre-sale. So uh, get on that. Uh, and yes, anyway, let's get into some fucking content, huh? Let's talk about, let's talk about this Capitol Hill stuff and just the whole Trump scenario. I'm, I think he, in, I think he incited, did incite the Capitol Hill raid and the riot. I don't think he meant to. That's kind of where I'm falling on it. I've seen a lot of different videos of him and I've seen a lot of videos of like his son and all of the fucking rallies and stuff. And I kind of view him as he's just, a, the dude's just like a, he's like a businessman. He's a bit of a con artist and he's a definitely a narcissist. He absolutely thinks he's the best. He always talks about how great he is. I think that's undeniable. He's a little bit of a narcissist. He thinks he's the greatest cunt ever, Right. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but the downfall of that is when you think you're top shit and you 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 think that you can do no wrong, you think you can do no wrong even accidentally. So the stuff that you say, if it if it's said and then it causes an incredibly negative thing, you don't even think of the possibility of that happening. So I think that he did incite the riots, whether or not he intended to, I'm on the fence about. I don't I here's what I think I don't think he intended to incite the riot but I also don't think he was particularly upset that it happened you know what I mean I think he just said some shit it incited the riots and then he was like oh well sucks to be those guys look how much these people love me that's fucking sick isn't it like I think that would have been his takeaway he's not like if, if I incited that stuff accidentally I'd be like oh my god I feel terrible I got a woman killed this is awful my colleagues hate me he would have gone fuck these people love me don't they that's it that is awesome oh, I hope I don't get in trouble that's the I think that might be the difference you know here's my thing I think that the, the, the Capitol riot participants, and not everyone there was there to riot because it was fucking, the, the crowd outside the Capitol Hill was insane. Massive, absolutely fucking huge. Like if you were the Capitol Hill cops, I would have been fucking, I would have let him in too. If it looked like 500,000 people were going to march in, I would be like, where's my red hat? <laughs> I want to join these cunts, you know? I just think that these the, the, the people that raided the Capitol were, were, are like strong. It's like a 50-50 mix between stupid and insane. Like just dumb cunts and who got swept up in the moment or believed fucking that they were actually going to achieve something and then insane people who really were going to try and do some shit. You know, the cunt with zip ties, people who put pipe bombs there, the people that killed the cop. They're insane. And everyone who participated in it is going to do jail time and that's what fucking happens, you know? Whether it's, whether it's fucking burning down a business because you're angry at police or breaking into a fucking Capitol Hill because you think the election's been stolen. Both of those things are bad and both of those things come with jail terms and that's the correct thing to do. All these cunts online going, oh, it's the people's house. How can you trespass in the people's house? We paid for it. Hey, bro, your taxes paid for maybe one millimeter of that building. If you add up everyone's contributions, sure, you get a millimeter, all right? But you can't go in the fucking door. You can't break down the door because some other cunt paid for one centimeter of the door. Now you owe him money, all right? Your taxes paid for the Pentagon too. You're going to go in there. Why don't you go check out Area 51, see how far you get in. Ask them if they have any aliens. You paid for it. It's yours anyway, isn't it? Fucking the dumbest fucking argument ever. Oh, I paid for the roads. I can put a fucking bomb and dig them up if I wanted to. They're mine. You're, an, you're actually an idiot. 
If that's your argument, you're just stupid and you can't be helped. I feel sorry for them. I do and I don't. You get what you deserve, but also you got fucking conned. I think they just got sucked in by this QAnon shit, you know? Especially because they got into the capital. And if they really... Here's the thing. If they really truly believed that they were stopping election fraud, that they were saving the nation from a corrupt group of elite pedophiles that were destroying the planet and had this new world order. If you really truly did believe that, and if that was actually true, you would have done more than what you did. Instead, you broke into the Capitol wearing costumes and walked around taking selfies. If I really thought that on the other side of that door was some elite fucking group of pedophiles that were destroying the world and harvesting children's organs. If I truly knew that to be true, deep down in my soul, if I really, really believe that shit, I'm busting down that door. But they didn't, did they? They got in and they took fucking selfies wearing costumes. They're not committal. They got sucked in. They walked in. They got hyped up. They got lost in the moment. They got in there and they thought... Fuck, I reckon that's enough, eh? This is this is a bit this is a bit much. I don't believe in the Facebook post that much. He, I mean, Q's just a letter. Is he really telling me the truth? I reckon I'm gonna go home. Like, they just got swept up and conned and sucked in and hyped up in the moment. And that's happened to me. I've got I've been out with the boys and they start and you know, one guy smashes a letterbox. Next thing we know, my mate's putting bins on top of a motorbike and pushing it over. I've done that. I've been there, I've done that. I've thrown stones through windows because the boys were doing it. I've fucking uh, been around while while cunts were jumping on the roof of cars after house parties. I've been swept up in the moment. I've been there. We weren't wearing MAGA hats and storming a political building, but it's the same genre of whoops probably shouldn't have done that you know what i mean you get swept up in the moment it's all a bit of fun smashing stuff is great fun breaking the law is a lot of fun however i was out there smashing letterboxes they were out there killing cops with fire extinguishers it's a little bit different but the energy is similar you know and i on, on that point i understand it but on the other point it's like hey you break into a government building you're going to jail and you made your bed how if how funny is that cunt who like dressed up in the horns and then obviously was like he was like the from social media point of view he was like the face of the movement you know what i mean he was the most viral of them and uh he ends up getting locked up straight away you know which is hilarious uh, and then he goes to prison and then his mother is out there talking to news outlets saying that he hasn't eaten for five days because the prison won't serve him organic food. Hey, bro, you're in jail, all right? You're not in a fucking Melbourne cafe. You're in prison. You broke into the Capitol Hill. You're going to eat the slop, all right? What, you, you're worried that there's no vegan options? There's no cruelty-free chicken? Should have thought of that before you broke into a government building, you fucking fool. That is so funny. Hilarious. I think a lot of people who broke into Capitol Hill would be absolutely disgusted at this man refusing to eat unless it's organic food. Man up, you fucking pansy. I, th I think that it is very funny. But it is very bad. I, I do. I here's here's also my, my other thoughts. I, I, I do sympathize with with. I don't sympathize with anyone who broke in, but I understand the frustration because I think that. I think that. You can't condemn. The people that did that shit, at Capitol. At the Capitol building. I'm saying Capitol Hill. That's correct, isn't it? Or is that a different place? I'm just, it's probably that Simpsons song, Capitol Hill. I might sound like a fucking moron. Capitol Hill. Let me just fact check myself once. Just this once. All right. Capitol Hill. Right. Yes. It is Capitol Hill. Yes. Okay. So you can't condemn the... Capitol Hill riot, but also defend the Black Lives Matter rioters who, who are different from the protesters burning down businesses. You just can't. You, you have to have the same stance on both of those issues. And it is insane seeing people who defended the burning down of the businesses, but did not, but condemned 
the the Capitol Hill raid because those two things are the same. It's destruction of property for uh, a reason that hurts your cause. No matter what the reason behind your cause is, it hurts your cause. The Black Lives Matter people, they had a legitimate reason to protest, but the rioters fucked that up and tarnished the reason, not entirely, but did tarnish it, because they were burning down businesses that had nothing to do with the reason for the protests. That is bad. Same with this Capitol Hill stuff. A lot of these fucking right-wing Trump supporters are angry about election fraud, corruption, which is incredibly debatable, but they fucked up their cause by doing that shit. It's the, it's the, it, it is the same shit. Now, the, the root causes are very different. The Black Lives Matter protests, they had a point. There is a lot of brutality. The George Floyd shit was horrific to watch. Uh, and uh, they had their point. And that point still stands, even after the the business burning and all that kind of bullshit. Uh, and then you have the right side, the Trump supporters, the election fraud, and <clears throat> feeling unheard and feeling like they're the enemy of the people. That stuff kind of also stands. I feel like... The Black Lives Matter people have more of a point, but their points still do stand, right? And I don't think you can dem- condemn one without condemning the other. That's insane to me. Um, that being said, uh, I think storming the Capitol Hill might be a little bit worse. You know, trying to kill politicians might be a little bit worse. Um, and also it is, it is fucking ridiculous seeing, seeing a lot of left-wing people that were so on board with the anti-police brutality, anti-police unarmed shootings, celebrate the shooting of this woman who died in the Capitol Hill raid. I think that shooting was legitimate. She's breaking the Capitol. That was the last door before the actual politicians that were there. She's looking, staring in the face of a barrel of a gun of a police officer telling her, do not come closer. I will shoot you. She goes closer. He shoots her. I, unless more footage comes to light, I don't exactly see an issue with it. Uh, or unless more information comes to light, it seems legitimate. But it's, it's fucking ridiculous seeing people just be overt hypocrites. And the same is true on the right, you know, all these people that were condemning the Black Lives Matter, people that were burning down businesses saying, oh, it's just a riot. They're just burning down businesses. They don't actually care about their cause. And then they're celebrating people breaking into the fucking Capitol Hill and and celebrating that riot. It's like you're as bad as each other. And then you have the social media bannings of Donald Trump. So I think that he I think that he did incite the riot. I don't think that he meant to because I feel like if he meant to he would have said it. I feel like he's that type of guy and he is that type of like uh arrogant to the point of stupidity where he would just come out and go, "Yeah, and I'll do it again." You know? I feel like he would just do that. What is scary though is that the Capitol Hill Police Department or, the, or the, the amount of police that were there. A lot of people were pointing out that there were fuck all police there, and that is true. What I've read, which is kind of scary, and I may be wrong on this because who fucking knows, uh, it said that uh, a, Trump got rid of a lot of people in the Pentagon that were not for him, so he just filled the Pentagon with just Trump loyalists, right? And then those people who were loyal to Trump didn't put enough uh, police at the Capitol when they knew there was going to be this massive march to the Capitol, which they definitely should have, obviously, because look what happened, because there was not enough cops, right? So they didn't put enough cops there. They didn't put enough security there. They didn't raise the army. And they also forced the police that were stationed there to share equipment with just the regular police force that is in that area. So they didn't, they were not equipped enough to handle that many people marching on a fucking building, obviously, because they all got in. So that is scary, you know, that, like that is like, that is probably a black, that, that's what made me go, oh, I, I guess maybe he did, maybe he did inside it and he did meet it. Because if you say some shit and then you make the police force weaker to, so that your people can get in easier, that's a black mark against your name. I'm not completely sold on either way. I don't like that he was banned. I don't like that he was banned from Twitter. Because here's the fucking thing. You cannot have 
Donald Trump banned from Twitter for inciting violence, but let China have Twitter, right? Those two things cannot exist in the same world. You open that door, all of a sudden, you got to ban every fucking leader of a dictatorship. you got to ban most leaders from communist countries, if not all. you got to ban every fucking leader that's ever, like, like what is inciting violence, you know? If, um, if fucking Joe Biden does an airstrike on a, on a, on a nation and they hit civilians. Are you, is that, are you going to fucking do that shit too? What does that mean? It's like, if it's inciting violence within their own country, what the fuck does that mean? I think that that opens the floodgates and it gives so much power to these social media companies. And I really do think this is my big point on this shit. And I'm getting on my soapbox here, but I care about it a lot. These social media companies uh, must be so fucking happy that we, and I'm not just, not just talking Americans, I'm talking like everyone in the world, these social media companies must be so happy that users of their sites are blaming each other, individuals, and calling for each other to be kicked off their platforms instead of looking at the real issue, which is the platform itself. I'm not saying that Twitter has to be fucking regulated by the government. I'm not saying that Facebook has to be shut down. But I do truly believe that the problem with this divide divide between especially America, but you see it slowly happen, happening in Australia, where people are so divided by ideological lines, by race lines, by sexuality, by religion, and it's becoming worse and worse and worse. We're literally watching it happen before our eyes of, of everyone becoming so fucking divided and not even just disagreeing with each other but hating the other team from, from left-wing people, hate right-wing people, vice versa, religious people, hate, hate atheists, all that kind of stuff. And the reason for that is because Facebook, Twitter, even YouTube to a lesser extent, it's more Facebook and Twitter, they show you things that you hate. They put you in bubbles. They isolate you into ideological, ideological bubbles. They figure out within, or within days of you joining that platform, they figure out this is a left-wing person of this variety, put them in that bubble. And they only show you opposing viewpoints that you would hate the most ridiculous form of the opposing viewpoint. And they only show you shit that you would hate and they show you shit that makes you angry. They show you shit that makes you have to write a comment and get into an argument and have this fucking back and forth because that drives engagement more than anything else. Facebook literally knows this. They've done internal reviews and they have found in 2016 after Trump got elected, Right, and all of this divisiveness stuff started really getting out of hand. I'm not saying that Trump getting elected was in 2016 was a bad thing. I mean, it hasn't turned out to be the best thing in the world. But I'm not saying that, as in Trump is 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 a reason for concern. Facebook employees wrote like this big letter to their own executives. So if you disagree with me, guess who disagrees with you? Facebook themselves. Facebook employees did this fucking massive internal review of their algorithms and their systems and they came to the executives and they found that Facebook was literally making people more divisive, making populations more divisive, making populations angrier, making people sad. We've seen this, the fucking social, what, what's that fucking movie that was out on Netflix? The, the social network or whatever the fuck that was called. We see... Social media make people more angry, more isolated, more depressed, more insecure. Uh, and that shit has a profound effect on how nations work as a whole. And these social media platforms could fix that like that. I'm not saying censor shit. I'm not saying delete stuff. I'm not saying boot people off the platform. I'm saying these algorithms need to be adjusted. Because at the moment, these algorithms, no matter where you are on the spectrum, they put you in a bubble and then they only show you the most ridiculous form of an opposing viewpoint so that you become more solidified where you are and angry at the enemy. And they do this for money. 
Because you fighting on their fucking platform means you're spending more time on that platform, means you're seeing more ads, means they're making more money. They are making you into a worse person for profit. They do that. You notice it. If you, if you get up and all you do is doom scroll, it fucks your whole day. And they want that because you spend more time on the app. People do social media detoxes and they come out these ins- as these insufferable fucking people that are so happy and enlightened. And you know what? They're fucking right because this social media shit is poison and it's algorithms. It's not people. Kicking Donald Trump off the platform is not going to fucking solve this. It's these algorithms that put people in bubbles and then show people shit they will hate, which makes them go out into the real world with this poisoned view of the opposing team, which is what leads to cunts not even seeing a reasonable opposing viewpoint or when they do dismissing it because they've seen the most ridiculous form of it and they paint them with the same brush. And it, and, and a lot of people go, oh, people just need to get smarter. Hey, bro, have you met humans? Have you seen us? We're fucking dumb. We're animals. It's why they have uh, regulations around smoking. It's why they have regulations around gambling. We can be exploited. You're not as smart as you think you are. I know I'm a fucking idiot. I got a few good ideas, but I know for the most part I am a human. We're dumb. We're exploitable. We can hack We can be hacked in the sense that you can exploit things lizard brain. That's why when every TikTok girl starts a TikTok, she stomps so her tits bounce and then our brains go, oh, titties, I've got to watch it and give it a like. We can be hacked. And I think that's what these social media platforms have worked out and these algorithms that are not operated by humans at all. They're just programmed to make us spend as much time as possible on the app. They've literally done internal reviews. Facebook knows this. Facebook has tried to warn their own bosses about this and they've done nothing of, hey, Facebook's literally making individuals worse people and destroying everyone's view of each other and pulling us apart rather than pulling us together, which is what social media is supposed to do and was pitched to us as... Instead, it's making us hate our neighbor, and it's these algorithms. It's no individual's fault. Of course, there are some crazy people. Of course, if people are calling for violence, kick them off the platform. But that is a minor issue in comparison, I think, to the algorithms. So that's me on my fucking soapbox. I'm going to end it there. Uh, The next episode is going to be funnier, uh, I hope. Uh, But uh, thank you very much for supporting what I do. Check me out on Patreon. I'm going to continue on here for an extra half an hour. I've run out of time here, but I do have some life advice questions that I am going to get to. What do I have here? I'm going to do these on the the Patreon segment of the podcast. I have uh, uh, how do you become more confident, and I also have uh, – I'll do that on the actual – I've got to do that email, which is an update to something that I talked about on the public one. So I'll do that, the update on the public one. Uh, I've got a couple of emails here that I want to uh, uh, do. So if you want to listen to more podcasts, if that wasn't enough for you, I'm doing some life advice stuff over on uh, the Patreon exclusive Sunday supplement is what I think we're calling it. If you want a bit more, a bit extra, you want all the benefits, you want all my videos early, you want early access to tickets, you want you want to jump in the fucking Discord, join the community, that's where we're going to find it. That's where we're going to fund the takeover this year and I would love to have you on board. So thank you for watching. I will talk to you next Sunday because, you know, if, if it doesn't happen next week, We're all going to be at the Westgate, and that's going to affect the economy. You cannot have that. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next week. Have a shit one.